Hello, students. Hello, students. Today, today, in our geometry class, we're going to be discussing isosceles and equilateral triangles. Now, the purpose is that at the end of this lesson, you should be able to find measures of equilateral and isosceles triangles. So let's look at a few theorems and corollaries. Theorem 4.3 states that the isosceles triangle says that it's two sides of a triangle growing and growing. Then the opposite angles of those sides are also congruent. Now, let's look at the corollaries. Theorem 4.3 states that the isosceles triangle says that it's two sides of a triangle growing and growing. So if we take a look at this picture here, here. it says that triangle ACB is isosceles, which means that AC and CB are the angle that are congruent because it's marked. That means that angle B and angle C are congruent. The converse of the isosceles triangle theorem essentially just states, if two angles are congruent, then their corresponding sides are also congruent. And by corresponding, we mean that if angle A and angle B are the same, then that means the sides opposite them, or corresponding to them, are the same. Therefore, AC, line segment AC, is congruent to line segment BC. And theorem 4 5 states that the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is the perpendicular bisector of the base. Therefore, it says if line segment CD is perpendicular to line segment AB, then CD bisects line segment AB. So, just to say that in English, it says that if we have an isosceles triangle and a line segment bisects that base or the base of that triangle, then it bisects that line segment, or that base, AB. So, the next set that we're going to look at are the corollaries. Corollary to theorem 4.3 states that if a triangle is equilateral, then the triangle is also equal angular, or equal angles. Theorem to theorem 4.4 states that if a triangle is equal angular, then the triangle is equilateral. So that essentially means if the sides are the same, then the angles are the same, and vice versa. So let's look at a couple examples. In example one, it mentions that angle X and angle Y are congruent because it has these little marks. That means if a triangle has 180 degrees, that means X plus Y plus 110 equals 180 degrees. If I subtract 110 from both sides, it means x plus y is equal to 70. And if x plus y are congruent, then that means x is equal to 35 degrees and y is equal to 35 degrees because it's isosceles. If we look at example 2, we also have an isosceles triangle. Now, because we know the rules of supplement or supplementary, 125 degrees plus x degrees is supposed to be equal to 180. If we subtract 125 from both sides, we get that x is equal to 55 degrees. Now, if x is equal to 55 degrees, then that must mean this is also 55 degrees because it's an isosceles triangle. And if that's the case, then that also means that z is equal to 125 degrees as well. Now, the only thing left for us to figure out is what's y. So, if we have x degrees plus 55 degrees plus y, that's equal to 1a. We know that x is 55. So, we're left with 110 plus y equals 180. And y is equal to 70 degrees. Now, it's your turn. Try problems 1, 2, and 3, and when you're done, please post your answers to Edmodo. First person will post, everyone else will just reply. That's it for now. See you next time.